Hi, my name is Tasha Danielle and I'm founder of Financial Garden. Financial Garden is a financial education company that teaches students kindergarten through 12 as well as adults how to win with money. I would like to share with you the nitty gritty, the <laughs> all the hard work I did in paying off my $80,000 in debt. In previous videos, I shared with you most of my debt comprised of student loan debt, federal and private, and my aha moment when I heard Michelle Singletary come into my church and give a keynote speak about owning your paycheck aka living a debt-free life after hearing her speak i got my googles on like most people do and i looked up like debt-free life just different ways to go about tackling all this debt that i had i was like on fire to kill this debt in a way i had never been before i was paying my debt using the debt avalanche method before hearing about the debt snowball the debt avalanche method is when you pay your debts according to the interest rate, not according to the balance of the loan or credit card. And the debt snowball is the opposite. You don't look at the interest rate, you look strictly at the smallest loan balance and you pay as much as you can to that balance while paying the minimum on everything else. So for example, my lowest student loan amount was $1,500 and I put all my extra money towards paying that $1,500 student loan and making the minimum payment on all the rest of the student loans that I had in my credit card bills. Now, to get to that point, before even listing and looking strictly at the loan amounts to credit card balances, I would like to share that I was budgeting prior to this. I was had I had things in Excel. So it wasn't that mind blowing for me to shift and start paying according to the loan balance versus the interest rate. Actually, I did a lot better with it. It's something mental that happens, like a mental shift happens when you're getting little wins. Like when I was paying according to the avalanche method, I was just like, I just didn't know when I was gonna be done paying this debt. I had an idea, but it just, I just never felt like I was making any traction. But it's something about getting a letter from a student loan servicer saying, loan balance pay, pay, credit card companies and your credit cards pay, your uh, car loan is paid. Like every time you get those letters or you get that email saying, pay you like, wow, I'm really doing this. I am really making the steps to a better financial future. And I know that may sound like cliche or whatever, but it really is true. And I know that it works so much for me. The debt snowball method was key for me paying off my debt before the age of 30. The other thing I want to mention is a cash envelope system and this is where Dave Ramsey's method, he talks about the death snowball, the cash envelope. He has seven baby steps. I am very familiar with Dave Ramsey because after starting my death snowball, I kept searching like for different ways because I couldn't find everything in one spot. I came across Dave Ramsey and I listened to his radio show every day for motivation for me to stay strong with paying off my debt. And so I did hear about all his baby steps and things of that nature, but I did not follow baby steps one through seven to, to the T. I did the debt snowball and I did the cash envelope system, which a lot of personal finance gurus mention going cash to spend less money. And so I did change how I was doing my budgeting. I still use Excel. I had two checking accounts actually. And I had a checking account for my bills such as my rent, all my my minimum payments for my debt. I had another checking account where my discretionary income was put into based off of what I budgeted for my groceries, gas, and things of that nature. And so I would take that money out in cash and that's what I would use for two weeks until I got paid again. So the major difference is, is that I wasn't just swiping and then saying, oh, if I spent overspent in groceries and I'll just get it from my gas money. It was just kind of like, that's how I budgeted before. I paid all my bills first and then I would put some money, extra money to credit cards or something like that. But if something else came up that month that I wanted to do instead, I wouldn't make the extra payment that month. That didn't happen often, but I knew that I could do better at it. And once I found out about the debt snowball, and once I got focused on paying off this debt, there was no more, oh, I can't make an exception this time. 
So my cash envelope system worked for me because once the cash was in that envelope, it's something mental again about not wanting to spend that last dollar <laughs> when it's in your envelope. So for example, I think I budgeted like $100 for myself for groceries every two weeks. And I always had extra money in my grocery envelope because I never, I just did not want to spend my last $5. Like I just got creative. Like, okay, I guess I'm going to buy a bag of potatoes and cut up some French fries and make turkey burgers just so I won't have to, I don't know. It was just something that I did so I wouldn't have to go and just spend my last on there. But I want to mention, it's not all about cutting back in the sacrifice. I got my money up, meaning that I switched jobs. I found a higher paying job that actually allowed me to get overtime as an accountant, which is crazy because my previous employer, I was at an accounting firm and you just work. I worked like 90 hours a week for the same pay. No matter how many hours I put in, I got the same pay. And so I was able to find an employer that actually paid overtime. And I worked a lot of overtime to get extra income to pay off my debt. I also started financial garden during this journey of paying off debt. I didn't have a name for it at the time when I started it. I just started getting contracts to teach financial literacy and then eventually I grew it into financial garden. I want to point out too that when I changed my spending habits, a lot of things changed in my life. And I want to share in my next video how my friend circle changed drastically and how I had to get off social media to stay focused on my financial goals. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Bye.